Hi everyone and welcome back to part 4 of Practical Prescribing for Doctors. So far we've covered laxatives, antiemetics, analgesia, VTE and antibiotics and today we're going to be talking about insulin prescribing as well as fluids. Now as a reminder these videos don't cover the ins and outs of each medications but they do cover practically what it looks like to prescribe on a drug chart so that it's not terrifying on your first day. The first thing we're going to talk about is insulin. So there's a whole area designated to insulin prescribing on the drug chart. On the top left, you'll have your regular doses of insulin that the patient usually has at home. On the bottom left, this is the PRN insulin, so as required, and this is where you'll put the Nova Rapid for when the BMs are very high. And then in the bottom right, you've got the insulin sliding scale, so a section for the nurses to complete, and then a section for the doctors, and this is for variable rate insulin when patients need their insulin adapted to what their actual glucose readings are. So the first section we're going to fill in is the variable dosing, and it's what the patient regularly takes. So for example, here I'm going to write up some Nova Mix, and that is essentially a mix mixture of rapid acting and longer acting insulin used to treat diabetes. So this patient has come into hospital with this medication and you just have to prescribe it in this section. So as you can see I sign and date it and this won't change unless the diabetes nurse reviews the patient and decides to increase or decrease the dose. The method of administration is flex pen. You make sure you put the start date and put the date at the top of the prescribing section. This is a pre-admission drug so you want to make sure you tick that box. And this medication is given with meal time so you want to make sure that you put the units of insulin that the patient needs to be given in those sections. So this bit is relatively straightforward because the patient already comes with their prescription. Now the as required section, this is when you have a patient who has high BMs and you want to prescribe Nova Rapid. So Nova Rapid is a rapid acting insulin analog, which means it's very similar to insulin made by the body, but is absorbed faster and is used to reduce high blood sugars. So this is a bog standard rapid acting insulin that you'll see given in hospital. Always check your trust guidelines because they might differ slightly, but this is generally what you'll see prescribed. So there's two doses you would write up. Four units of Nova Rapid would be given if the BMs are over 15, and six units of Nova Rapid would be given if the BMs are over 20. I've written it out in two boxes to make it simpler to see, but sometimes you'll see people writing it up in one section and just writing in the instructions four units if BMs over 15 and six units if BMs over 20. The method of administration is pre-filled to so subcut and I've put PRN with the instructions below. So that's going to be the most common thing you prescribe in the insulin section. Now this section is for variable rate insulin and there's lots of indication for this including patients who are unable to orally intake food and fluid, who can't have their own insulin regimen or are constantly vomiting. Um, and this is going to be very much directed by your own trust guidelines. So this top section the nurses will fill in and in this section here doctors will fill in the blood glucose results and how much insulin they want given for each of those glucose levels. And this again will be dependent on the trust guidelines. This is an example of what it may look like. Now we get to end of life medications. Now I included this because I think it's very helpful to have an idea of what's written up for patients who are nearing the end of their lives. Hospitals have palliative teams who get involved and will be able to guide you in the medication prescriptions. But it's very helpful to know these four medications because they're typically the ones that are given and they're quite easy to remember. So the first medication is oxycodone. Now this is given for pain management and to help with breathing. Breathing. The dose is quite small as you can see, so 1.25 to 2.5 milligrams, and it's okay to write a range for this. The frequency should not be put in range, however, so here I've put two hourly, I've signed and dated, put my GMC number, and I've written the max dose as 15 milligrams in 24 hours. So the next medication is haloperidol and this is given for agitation, confusion and even nausea. Here the dose is 0.5 milligrams to 1.5 milligram. The root is subcut and you can give this three times a day, so TDS. It's a new medication so take that new box, sign, date and GMT number as usual. It's always helpful to put the maximum dosage for these palliative medications. So here I've put 4.5 milligrams in 24 hours.
Midazolam is our third medication and this is also given for agitation and anxiety. The dose is 2.5 milligrams to 5 milligrams and again the frequency is two hourly. Sign, date, GMC number, as per usual, you, as you can see for every prescription, you have to make sure you include these basic elements. I've put in the maximum dose, which in this case is 30 milligrams in 24 hours. End of life meds may be given in a syringe driver and not subcut, but that's beyond the scope of this video. And finally, the fourth common medication that's prescribed for end of life is hyacine butyl bromide. Now this helps to reduce secretions for patients who struggle with their breathing. As you can see, they're all subcut. The dose is 20 milligrams and you can give this two hourly. The date, sign, GMC number, new medication, and put the maximum dose, which in this case is 120 milligrams in 24 hours. You may see slight alterations of the doses in different hospitals, but this gives you a broad overview of what you can prescribe and what appropriate doses there are. As always, if in doubt, you can always speak to your palliative care team or speak to one of the pharmacists. So there you have it. That was a broad introduction to insulin prescribing and end of life medications. I really hope you found this useful. If you would like any other prescribing videos or any topic that you would find helpful, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.